Hey guys, Omar here. And yesterday I had a great conversation with a friend of mine. Uh, we were talking hard drives, we were talking data, and he's interested in getting um, a network attached storage, which is something I have. And I thought it was a great opportunity to share my movement of data because I'm sure we all struggle with this and it also changes every year as data gets bigger, files get larger, maybe you're starting to do video. Now this isn't the ultimate solution because I keep trying to improve every year, but this is where I am now. And so I thought I'd share where I came from a little bit. <laughs> maybe it's where you are. Uh, and then where my system is so far as far as moving photographs. Now, I work as a photographer for a living, so this may be very different if you're just taking photographs for a family or it's just a hobby and your files, um, you don't have as many files, you don't need these huge systems. So think about, instead of thinking about the amount of storage that I have, think about how you can either scale it down to work for you. Okay, real quick, a little history. So when I first started photography, I basically, just like everyone, had all my pictures on one computer. I then pretty much started to try to back them up to disks, and I had a bunch of disks everywhere, CDs, burning CDs. Eventually, this became all my pictures on the computer, but I bought an external drive to back them up, so I had them in two places. I was also still burning CDs and I had just pictures everywhere. I then started to build up drives as they filled up. And so drives would be in like boxes and um, if I needed to look for pictures, it got all crazy confusing. Eventually I went to a typical backup system where all my pictures live on an external drive, but there were two other drives to back up. One which was sitting in the office and one which I would back up to and then move to another location. And even that is not safe. You know that anything can happen to any drive at any time. I started getting more and more files. Uh, in some events, I... Now, before doing photography professionally, the pictures were just for me. So I could print them, I could keep them on discs. Um, the backup system was important because the photographs are important to us as memories. But really, as soon as I started working, it became a paranoia. It became... Where are these pictures going to exist so they are 100% safe so that I could have them for clients, they could be archived, just to be organized. You know, it's, it's not that I am organized, it's that if I'm such a scatterbrain that if I didn't have a system, pictures would be everywhere. Loose hard drives, um, and that, there was a time where actually I had hard drives everywhere. So let me share my system really quickly. For those of you that are more advanced, you understand hard drives, RAID systems. So I'll do it really quickly and then I'll explain it slower for the slow people. And of course, if you have questions, leave them below and yada, yada, yada. All right, this is the fast version for those of you that know this mumbo jumbo. I have a GTEC RAID 1. So I have a RAID 1 that has a multiple mirrored copy of all the photographs. Okay, after the RAID 1, everything goes to this JBOD. This is a JBOD with basically separate drives. My drives are the current year. Oh, sorry, I have them out of order. <laughs> that gets automatically backed up by Chronosync to go to this JBOD. This is a JBOD system with each year on here. So I have 2017, 2018, they're not in order. 2017, 2018, 2016 uh, of all my jobs so I can access them. These jobs do not exist on the working drive. They are completely uh, emptied out and dumped to here. I then have a rejects drive, which I'll explain later, uh, and there's one empty bay in there. After the archive drive, in my closet, I have a NAS, an eight bay Synology, which automatically backs up everything from the archive drive, so they're also on here. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the details of what I just rambled on about. All right, guys, so here we go. Uh, my computer doesn't actually hold any photographs. Remember, I have an external drive. And at first I used to have a single drive that would keep filling up and filling up and I'd have to switch them out. But that kind of became a pain when I needed, to look up for old, I needed to look up old photographs. So this right here is set up as a RAID 1. So on here, this is known as my working drive. Now the working drive fills up and empties out. So now the system is, it, it will flow. It'll flow into this guy and out of this guy. So basically the working drive is two drives in here. This is an eight terabyte drive. Uh, this has two drives in there. And I've got it set up as a RAID 1. 
A RAID 1 is basically a mirrored copy. So in case one of these drives breaks, I, have, I can open this up and actually take one of the drives out and use it. So I like my working drive to be a RAID 1 mirrored drive for redundancy, okay? Now RAID isn't considered uh, by tech people a backup, meaning if you delete a file from one, it'll delete it from the other one. It basically just mirrors everything you do from one to the, to the other. But I know if one of these drives dies, I can take this out and be up and running if I put it into uh, a toaster or a kind of a drive reader. Okay, next, this is my JBOD. Now the JBOD is basically, this stands for just a bunch of drives. I love that name. Now my JBOD holds each drive individually. So I have them out of order in the actual drive thing. Uh, but basically I have uh, my, let's just put them in order here. So uh, 2016, 2017, and 2018. So basically these kind of, this is considered my archive drives. Okay, and the archive drives hold each year separately. I wouldn't be able to back this up myself. I need help. So what I use is a program called Chronosync. Chronosync. And I learned this from watching uh, Joey L. If you want to look up Joey L, he's a, a commercial photographer that's awesome. But I saw him on a creative live and he mentioned Chronosync. And it's been a lifesaver because Chronosync is a program that does all the backup stuff in the background for you because I can't worry about that. I can't worry about if I dragged, which one is backed up, which one's not. So you tell Chronosync, hey, you know what? Uh, if these two drives are connected to the computer, keep backing them up, okay? Make sure that you back up the jobs. And this last drive is called the rejects drive, which I'll explain in another video. I'll explain the rejects drive when I talk about my actual workflow. So now everything in 2018 exists here and exists here, but that is not enough. And it's definitely not enough that these guys exist by themselves now because they don't exist in the working drive anymore. So that is my third, the one we saw in the closet, and that is the Synology, okay? So this is a Synology 8-bay, and this is complete overkill. Like, I don't even have all of these filled up. Like, some of these are not filled up. Um, but I wanted to future proof, or at least a little future, future. <laughs> I wanted to at least a little future proof my system because what kept happening was that before I had the Synology, I would archive the archive. And so I would have another drive for 2016. And so I would have one here and I would have one here. Okay. And then that would fill up and I'd put it in a case and then that would go in a box. So I would have it in the JBOD and then I'd have that. That's a pretty good system. So you don't actually need this humongous uh, NAS. This is a network attached storage. So you can go from a working drive to one archive drive that's always hooked up in case you need to go to old stuff. And then in a box or in a separate location, you can have other drives which have a backup of your archive. And so that's kind of the last system I was at before I got the NAS. But I wanted to have the NAS because it's got a lot of memory. It's like 40 tetrabytes right now, uh, which is nowhere near being filled, of course. But basically all these jobs are automatically backed up to the Synology. And I use Synology, the company Synology's uh, system, to sort of just do it itself. So it automatically writes this to Synology's RAID system. Synology has their own RAID system, uh, but it's similar to if you look up RAID 5 or RAID 6. It basically writes the data to all of these. And the reason for that is if any of these drives, one or two of these die, your data is still safe on the other drives, okay? So I have everything backed up to the NAS. And the good thing about the NAS is that it backs up, um, it acts as like our personal cloud. So I can actually grab stuff if I am in a separate location, I can grab photos and things like that, okay? Now, although this looks awesome, <laughs> let me erase all this and show you why this is still dangerous. 
All right, so if God forbid there's a fire or something in your house, none of this data exists. So you need other backup. You need off-site backup. There's a couple of things you could do. I mean, you can physically take a disk and put it in a box and you know have it at a relative's house or a neighbor's house. Uh, but I don't do that. I, I it just don't, it just doesn't work into my workflow, which stinks because I really should be doing that. I should be taking it and putting stuff off site. So mo most of my stuff is in separate cloud locations. Uh, I used to use Backblaze, which is a really great service. I just found it for uh, large raw files. Uh, when you're trying to back up thousands of raw files, it's just never finished. It's always backing up. And so I kind of want a backup that's finished, okay? Amazon has backup, Dropbox, all these, uh, uh, you know, all these services have backups, but I'll talk about um, backing up photographs. Now, if you happen to have Amazon Prime, it includes unlimited photographs for free in the Amazon cloud. So you should be having Amazon look at your photos file, or at least one of your photo folders, and have it back up. You should do that right now. So one thing I use is Amazon for our family photos and stuff, Amazon uh, Drive is looking at our pictures folder. Okay, so our pictures for the year are being backed up to Amazon, I don't know which way the arrow goes, Amazon Drive. My clients and the family, we use SmugMug. So SmugMug contains all my photographs, at least as full pristine JPEGs. So all my galleries, all my client galleries, all our family stuff is up there on the cloud, which I can access. Okay, so use what you can from this video. And then we've built such a great community here. Let's leave comments below. I'll, I'll leave the first comment that says, what's your backup solution? And we can all share on that one comment. Uh, and I love that we all learn from each other here. So leave what's working for you. And even like comment where you are, like maybe you have all your pictures on one computer and you're ashamed. Leave that comment below too.